In this video, we're going to use expectation values and operators to calculate the average position of the particle in a box wave functions. Okay, so in our particle in a box wave function, our particle in a box model, we solve that the wave functions, the solutions or the eigenfunctions of the Schrodinger equation, the Hamiltonian operator, were that psi n of x, n being our quantum number, starting at 1, going all the way up to infinity. Psi n of x equals square root of 2 over L, the length of our box, times sine n pi x over L. So we have our wave function for n equals 2. I have plotted here. Psi 2 of x has a positive and a negative region. It's a full sine wave. And psi 2 of x squared, or psi star times psi, our probability density function has two lumps of probability there. And whatever n is, is the number of half sine waves we have and the number of uh, regions of probability we have in our probability density. Okay, so if we want to calculate the average value of something, like the average position of our particle over our entire density, well, we can do that because we have our probability density, and we, what we can do is use the operators for that property. So I mentioned that operators are going to be very important in quantum mechanics, and here's how they're going to be so. So the operator for x is just multiplying times x, and the operator for x squared, any operator to the nth power is doing that operator n times. So x squared is doing the operator x twice, so multiplying times x squared. So let's compute the average value of x. So to calculate the average value of a property, we integrate from minus infinity to infinity dx psi star complex conjugate of psi of x times the operator acting on psi of x. Okay, and in this case, our wave function is 0 if it's less than 0 or greater than L, so we really only need to integrate from 0 to L. So this curly bracket here, of x is what we would call the expectation value or the average value of x. So we compute that by doing the integral of 0 to l dx of square root of 2 over l sine n pi x over l. We would take the complex conjugate, but there's no imaginary part. There's no i, no square root of minus 1, so we leave it alone. It ends up just being the wave function squared in the end. So this, this times x times square root of 2 over l sine n pi x over l. Uh, multiplication doesn't do anything to this wave function, so we can just take x times our wave function squared. So what we get is the expectation value of x equals factor out our square root of 2 over l squared, gives us 2 over l. Integral from 0 to l of x times sine squared n pi x over l. All right, so to get this, we're going to use the integral of x sine squared kx dx, where k here is going to be n pi over l. That's typically the, the formula I'm going to use. If it's an integral I don't know how to do, I'm going to look up online some kind of integral table and try to find something that looks familiar to this function. Obviously, I'm not going to get exactly n pi x over l, so looking for x sine squared kx is a pretty good strategy. All right, and when I do that, this integral becomes x squared over 4 minus 1 over 8k squared. I believe this needs to be a k squared. Let's see if I can adjust that. There we go, movie magic. 1 over 8k squared cosine 2kx minus 1 over 4k x sine 2kx. All right, so let's substitute some values in there. It's going to be 2 over l times x squared over 4 minus our k is n pi over l, l over 8 n pi, cosine 2 pi n x over l, minus l over 4 n pi, x sine 2 n pi x over l. We're going to evaluate this on our upper and lower limits, 0 and l. Okay, so we get some nice simplification here, because n being an integer, um, the cosine of 2 pi n x over l that at l and 0, so this is going to give us the cosine of 2 pi n and the cosine of 0. Uh, whatever those values are, they are the same value. 
So every two pi cosine repeats itself. So it's going to repeat itself two pi n times. This term is going to be the same at zero and L. This term goes away. Similarly, sine dot two n pi x over L. This is the sine of zero and the is zero and the sine is zero every two pi. So same reason, uh, actually different reason. This one is zero at both values, but it is the same at the upper and lower. So this term goes away. The only thing that actually contributes is our x squared over four. That's L squared over four at L and zero at zero. So we get that down there. So that cancels with the two over L out in front there, leaving us with uh, no L on the denominator and an L on the numerator. Two over four gives us a one half. The average value for X is the length of the box over two. On average, the particle is exactly in the middle of the box. And that makes perfect sense because it pretty much has to be. I mean, there's, there's no potential that forces the particle to spend more of its time on either side of the box. So it makes perfect sense that the particle spends equal amounts of time on either side of the box at every single value of n. Notice that we did include n in here and it didn't end up mattering. So the average value is the same for all values of n. The particle is on average in the middle of the box. Oh, let's get that off. Okay, and then now we're going to compute the average value of x squared. Now this is going to be slightly different than squaring this value, and that's going to help us calculate the uncertainty in x, as we'll see in a minute. All right, so similar kind of setup. We have integral 0 to L, psi star. Operator is x squared now, and psi dx. S similar logic gets us to that that is the square. 2 over L, integral 0 to L, x squared, sine squared, n pi x over L dx. Okay, so similarly, I looked that up in an integrals table. I get 1 over 4k squared, x cosine 2kx, minus 2k squared, x squared minus 1 over 8k cubed, sine 2kx plus x cubed over 6. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. You can work your way through that algebra on your own if you like. The punchline of this is I can end up factoring this down into the final expression that I get down here. The average value of x squared is L squared, the length of the box squared, times 1 third minus, two, minus 1 over 2 pi squared n squared. So n is in a denominator here. So at n equals infinity, this denominator gets very large, it goes away. So at n equals infinity, what we're going to have is the average value of x squared is 1 third L squared. If I substitute n equals 1 here, I get 0 0.283 L squared. So this would be 0 0.333 L squared. Okay, so you notice that the average value of x squared starts at 0.283 and then goes up about 10, 15% or so up to 0.333 L squared as you go from n equals 1 to n equals infinity. It'll converge like 1 over n squared to quickly converge to this asymptotic value. Okay, so that's the average value of x squared. Notice that it's if we took the square root of that, that's different than this. So what we want to calculate now is the variance of x. So for an operator A, we represent that by sigma A squared, kind of the uncertainty or the variance in it. And the square root of the variance, as we know from statistics, or if you don't know, I'll tell you right now, that's called the standard deviation. So the way we would compute that is we would compute the integral from minus infinity to infinity of psi star, and the operator we would use is A minus the expectation value of a, this whole integral, that quantity squared acting on psi of x. But luckily, so it's basically on average, how far is it is it away from your average squared? Luckily, we don't have to do that because clever people have factored this out and realized that this whole variance integral ends up just being the expectation of x squared, or this should be the expectation of a squared for now, expectation of a squared minus the expectation of a quantity squared. And as we've seen, these two are not necessarily equal. Okay, so substituting in x, I have sigma x squared equals, 
uh, this value, L squared, 1 over 3 minus 2, or uh, minus 1 over 2 pi squared n squared, minus x, expectation value of x is L over 2, that value squared. Okay, so that gives us, when we factor things out, L squared, 1 12th minus two, 1 over 2 pi squared n squared. So once I do all the algebra, if I take the square root of this to go from the variance to the standard deviation, which is our real measure for the uncertainty in the x position, square root of this becomes sigma x is L times square root 1 12th minus 1 over 2 pi squared n squared. Okay, so let's look at the values of this. So for n equals 1, if you substitute that in there, you get a value of 0 0.181. Uh, 181 times L, I believe. Yes, should be a times L there. 181 L. And for n equals infinity, you get sigma x of infinity is 0 0.289 L. So once again, it's going to be steadily increasing, quickly converging from 0.18 all the way to the value of about 0.29. We also notice that the uncertainty in x is proportional to the length of the box. That makes sense because as the box gets bigger, it's more uncertain where the particle is within the box. It's pretty, pretty likely to be spread out pretty far. As you get to higher and higher values of x, or higher values of n, it's more evenly spread throughout the box. And we see that our minimum uncertainty is at n equals 1, going up to the maximum value at n equals infinity, but very quickly converging to a finite value. So this is the basics of how we use an operator and a wave function to compute the average value of the property that that operator represents. We can calculate that operator or its self squared and use those two to compute the uncertainty in that value and analyze some uh, facts about that, see if they make intuitive sense or not, and see whether or not quantum mechanics is giving us uh, some reasonable predictions here or whether or not uh, we have some confusion that we need to look into.